Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming today. Um, this is our Tech Talk series that we're doing Fridays at noon weekly. Um, today we're going to be talking about top marketing tools. Um, this was this presentation was adapted from an article I found in Computers and Libraries. Um, I've linked to the article later in the presentation and uh, Thank you all so much for coming. If you're unfamiliar with Zoom, there's a few features I just wanted to point out briefly. Um, at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat option. Um, if at any point you have questions or need me to clarify anything, uh, feel free to pop a question into the chat function. Um, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end, uh, but just let me know if you need anything. Uh, my name is Caitlin. I work at Central Library for Tulsa City County Library. Um, I teach technology classes and on a variety of topics. Um, all of today's slides you can find um, at this link here. This link will appear a few times in the presentation, so if you don't get it down right now, that's okay. I'll also send out an email um, with this link as well as a recording of this video so you can access it later. Um, there's a lot I'm going to be covering today. Um, I've kind of broken it down into a few basic topics. I'm going to look at some image editing tools, places to find good images, uh, stuff for video editing, and then we'll get into further stuff like writing skills and project management tools. Um, and there's a just for fun section at the end because we always need something <laughs> for fun. Um, but again, uh, I've got a lot to get through, so I'm going to kind of go quickly. If you have questions, feel free to use the chat. Uh, the first tool I wanted to talk about was a tool called Pixlr Express. Uh, Pixlr is a image editing tool that I primarily use um, on my computer, but it also has a mobile version, um, either for like an iPhone or an iPad or other sort of mobile device. Um, the thing I really like about Pixlr is just kind of the usability of it. Um, in these slides, I also want to mention all of these resources are linked. So if you get back to these later and you're trying to find links to some of these things, uh, all of the pictures have images, have links built in as well as the headings. Um, but once you get into Pixlr, uh, they've got pricing. I mostly use the free version, but there are plans that you can purchase um, that have more flexibility. Uh, Pixlr X is usually what I use, um, but say you want to get started editing something, you can open up an image, and I'm just going to go into my downloads folder and see what I have. Um, we're working on the Asian American Festival website right now, so I'm sure we have some pictures from the Asian American Festival that I'm just going to open up. Um, hit apply. And here we have some drummers drumming. Um, let me turn off that notification. Um, so if I wanted to come in here along the side, you can see there's lots of different tools that we can use, including like crop. Um, you can cut out, if this was something that had more of a, a steady background, we could actually go through and remove the background so we could get a transparent background, um, which is handy. Uh, I mostly use it for coloring and filtering. So if you want to come in here and mess with like the temperature and the saturation, these have pretty easy to use sliders. Um, they also have filters that you can apply. Um, and then there's some, you know, brushing and stuff. So if you wanted to retouch um, some of these things, like let's say we wanted to use a clone stamp, um, that's something that we could do in here pretty easily. Uh, so it has a lot of the same features that say Photoshop would, but I think it's a lot simpler interface to work with. Um, and they do have free versions that are really nice to use. So Pixlr, I'm a huge fan. Uh, if you do get the mobile version of it, I will say, unless you pay for it, you'll get ads and they're pretty obnoxious ads. So I mostly use it in the browser, but there is a mobile version available. Um, the next one is an open source software uh, that some of you may be familiar with. It's called GIMP. Um, GIMP is probably one of the closest tools I have seen to Photoshop that you can download for free. Um, it's open source, so it's it's free to download um, and it's supported on most most computers um, but it has a lot of the same features that Photoshop does a lot of the same tools um, you can do you can work with layers um, pretty easily um, and it's free so if you're looking to kind of a uh, pare down on some of your uh, subscriptions I know Photoshop can be pretty pricey and GIMP is a good alternative to it um, the third thing I wanted to talk about is Canva um, if you have used Canva before, um, you probably don't need my, my speech I'm about to give, but Canva is one of the tools that I enjoy using the most. Um, it's something that is free to use, and there are paid versions of it that, uh, you know, not everything on the site is free. 
Um, but essentially with Canva, you can go in and find uh, templates and add your own content to it. So I am just going to go ahead and open up Canva quickly so you can see it. Um, I'm already logged in with my personal account on here. Um, but say you are looking to create a design. Um, we have one thing I really like about this is they have um, kind of pre-made sizes available for you. Um, so say you run your company's Facebook account and you're trying, trying to come up with a Facebook event cover. Um, we could look for Facebook event cover and it will give you um, the size that Facebook uses for their event covers. And you can go in and uh, start populating it with stuff. Um, the thing that's most powerful about Canva are the templates that they have. Um, you can kind of scroll through here. There's literally thousands of templates. So say you're trying to work with something for like a Halloween picture or a Halloween post of some sort. We can actually search for Halloween. Um, you'll notice when I hover over these things here on the left, they'll say free or not free. Um, I'm cheap, so I usually go for the free stuff. Um, but say I wanted to take this one over here and edit this um, so we can invite people to buy Halloween goodies. Um, I'm not that good at marketing, so I don't have uh, quite the eye for this thing, but you can come in here and uh, resize things pretty easily. Um, you can even change the color on some of these things. So say instead of a purple cat, you wanted to go with an orange cat, you could do that. Um, one thing that's nice is it'll actually keep your colors that you use in the document. So when you're changing out colors of stuff, um, kind of streamlines it. Um, over here on the left-hand side, you can add photos. Um, you can search through photos that they have, or you can upload your own images. So um, say if instead of something like this, you wanted to add a lynda.com uh, profile thing right there, you could do that. Um, and then there's also handy things like pre-made text. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just add a new page here. Uh, I always forget how to do this, add button, there we go. Um, say I wanted to create my own design, I could come in here and pick one of these fonts that have already been pre-made and go through and just edit your own stuff. So I won't get too far into Canva. There's a lot you can do with it. Um, I particularly like that they have preset sizes. Um, and if you purchase one of their plans to get like more features, um, you can use a lot of different things in Canva. We actually use Canva for the library um, and we have, a, we have like team folders. So our public relations department, if they create something, they can share our design with us and then we can go through and edit with our own information. You can also include like branding stuff, um, especially if you're using this with a large group of people. You can set standard fonts and colors um, that'll be like the standard uh, fonts and people are going through and adding design. So it's a good way to streamline uh, your brand if that's something you're looking for. Um, I also really like that Canva has pretty in-depth um, courses on how to use Canva. Um, so if you're ever interested in getting started, you can go to their design school and they have tutorials for all sorts of things. Um, and if you look through here, um, you can see kind of like the, the full list of classes that they have, um, but they're very in-depth and very good classes. Um, the next one I wanted to talk about coolers. Um, if you are not one with an eye for color, uh, like me, um, this is a really handy tool that will actually let you um, build color palettes. Um, so say you're designing a logo or wanting to spruce up a newsletter and you're not quite sure uh, what colors will match with each other, you can actually come in here and uh, try to find um, some colors that you like. So I'm going to hit the space bar to pull up new colors. Um, I like this mint one here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this in place, hit space again. And I like this blue and I like this green, hit space again. Um, what this is doing is it's pulling colors that kind of match um, the palette of some of the colors I like. Uh, and it'll build kind of a, I'm going to say the word palette three more times, but it'll build a palette of colors that you can, you can work with um, that complement each other um, on the, the color wheel thing, if you are familiar with that. So big fan of this one. Um, it's free to use the generator. Um, and they've also got some other stuff that you can do in here, um, but this is primarily what I use it for. 
Um, another tool that I use pretty heavily um, is a is a it's a website called HTML Color Codes. Um, with this website, you can actually uh, do a few things. You can find all of the hex codes for colors. Um, but the thing I use it for most often is you can actually come in here and use a color picker from images that you upload to figure out what the color codes are for images. So um, say you have a logo that you were given, but you don't know what the color code is. I, you can actually come in here, find it, and now we have the color code that we can use, say over in Canva, to make sure we're matching colors with whatever we're doing. Um, so kind of a fun tool. I use it fairly often because I can never remember the color codes that I'm supposed to use. Uh, so we talked about some image editors. Um, a question that I get from a lot of people is how do I find good images that I can use on my website or in graphics? Uh, and I wanted to share a few resources that I use pretty heavily. The first one being Unsplash. Um, so Unsplash, oh man, my keyboard is acting all sorts of ways today. There we go. Ooh, sorry about that, guys. Um, so Unsplash is one that I use fairly, fairly often. Um, it's a website where photographers can actually go and upload images that they've taken and share with people. Um, and it also give you information about the photographer so you can cite them. Um, but they use Creative Commons licensing I think zero on here. So you don't necessarily need to um, cite who took the photo. But say you wanted to find pictures of dishes to put onto your website, you can search for dishes and find the one that you're looking for. Uh, we're going to go with this pretty blue tea set. Um, you can download for free. And then down here, um, it'll give you some related photos, but it'll also give you information about the photographer who took the photo. So if you like their work, you can find more stuff that they've done. Um, and it's they've got great stock imagery on here. Everything's free. So big fan of Unsplash. Um, another site, Pexels. I don't use it quite as often as Unsplash, but it's got kind of a similar vibe. Uh, you can get on there, do searches, download free images. They also have videos on here, which is pretty handy, especially if you're working um, with video, but you don't necessarily have good video yourself that you've taken. Um, so it's a good site. Pond5. Uh, this one's a little different um, from the last two in that it has stock video and audio. Um, most of the stuff on here does cost money, uh, but they do have a few free things. Um, but say you're working on some sort of animation and you need some some video to use, um, you can get in here, find footage and download it. Um, and then the same thing for audio, which is handy. Um, and then Audio Jungle is kind of similar to the last site. Um, it's actually by a company um, that's got a lot of different uh, resources. Um, audio Jungle specifically will let you find music um, and tracks that you can use um, and then download them for just a dollar a piece. Uh, but they also have video, graphics, photos, 3D files, um, and it's part of the Invado market. So they have kind of a larger umbrella, uh, but Audio Jungle is one that I've used fairly often. Um, and then another great way to find resources, especially if you're trying to save on some money, um, Creative Commons is a fantastic resource for understanding, um, to, to look into if you're trying to understand copyright a little better. Um, they have some really good information about Creative Commons licensing on here that I would encourage you to take a look at. Um, but the thing I use most often is the search function in here. Um, so you can actually come through here and say I want to search for puppies. Um, and they have two things you can check down here. It's something I, can, I want to use commercially. So say you wanted to use this picture of puppies on your grooming website. Um, it's something I can use it commercially. And then say you want to add hats to the puppies, uh, so you'd be modifying it, you can check that. And this will show us a list of puppy pictures that we can use um, that are uh, free of uh, copyright. Um, you can also come in here and look at some of their collections and see what all collections they're looking through um, when they're finding this stuff. Some of these things is like the Digital Museum, the Brooklyn Museum, um, are things that are archived and made available for free. Uh, but then some of these things are like Thingiverse, where you can find um, free 3D design. So a little bit of everything, uh, and Creative Commons makes it pretty easy to search through it, which I, which I really like. Um, getting into some of the video editing stuff that is available out there, uh, Biteable is one that I've heard really good things about. I've not used it myself um, because it does cost money to use. 
uh, but if you're often looking to make animations, uh, say for social media or your website, um, Writable has some really great templates that you can use and stock images and video uh, that you can go through and make really nice looking animations for your business. Um, again, it, is it does cost money and they've got kind of tiered pricing depending on how much content you make. So you might take a look at it. Um, it's not something I have a whole lot of use for, but I've seen really nice stuff that was made on this with this service. Um, WeVideo is another similar service. Um, it's really nice. Uh, video editor um, that you can pay a subscription for um, and is run in a browser, which I kind of like. Um, we video, I think their pricing starts at like four or five dollars per month and then kind of goes up from there. Um, if you have the cheapest plan, I think you can edit up to 30 minutes of video um, a month and then it kind of goes up at that point. Um, but it's just kind of a nice, a nice, easier to use video editor if you're looking for one. Um, if you're looking for something open source, the one I would recommend is called Shotcut. Um, this is a, a software, it's open source, you can download it for free, and it is probably one of the most um, in-depth free video editors I've seen. Um, so if you don't want to pay for Adobe Premiere Pro, but you're looking for some of the capability of Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, this is a good place to look. And then another tool um, that I wanted to mention, and this one is actually pretty sim similar to Canva that we looked at earlier, is called Crello. Um, Crello is a service that you can use to create simple animations or um, images, and they have templates that you can use um, and kind of go through and add your own content. So this is one that I made very quickly for the library, Seeds Library. Um, if you guys are working on some of your gardens, don't forget that we have seeds that you can check out um, for free with your library card. Um, and this is just something I threw together quickly. Um, and then moving on from video, if anybody is looking for a good audio editing tool, um, Audacity is one that is open source and you can download it for free. Um, it doesn't take a huge powerful machine to run, which I like. Um, and this is one that we have on all of the library computers um, because it is so handy. So Audacity, um, free audio editing. So if anybody is looking to start their own podcast, um, make your own music, Audacity is a really great place uh, to look for a good audio editor. Now, moving on from that, um, I wanted to talk about a few social media management tools. Uh, these are not ones that I've used overly heavily, um, and they probably won't be of much use to you if you don't do much in the way of social media marketing. Um, but if you are a social media person, say for your business, or if you're an artist or something, uh, I, it can be very difficult to manage social media if you have several platforms. Um, so at the library, we have a Facebook account, we have an Instagram account, we have a Twitter account for each of our library locations, um, and our public relations office uh, has a lot of work to do. So um, one thing that's handy is, I think Alex is actually in here, she does all of our social media stuff for the library. Um, it, with Hootsuite, you can actually go through and schedule posts, and then you can also schedule posts between different platforms. So say you wanted to tweet something, you could also schedule it to go onto your Facebook page or your Instagram account. Um, and it will also help you um, kind of convert different posts for different platforms because they look different between different platforms. Um, it does cost monthly to use Hootsuite. I think they maybe charge $30 a month um, if you do the build annually thing, um, which can be pretty pricey. So if you're not a heavy social media user and this isn't a problem you have, um, probably don't go this route. But if you are managing multiple accounts or you have multiple people uh, managing accounts, this can be a really easy way to kind of streamline the work that you're all doing. Uh, Buffer is a very similar resource to Hootsuite um, and I think has a lot of the same functions. I think the thing that you probably want to look at primarily between the two is the cost. Um, I've seen lots of articles asking like which is better between the two um, and I couldn't find like a very good consensus on it. So I'm not going to recommend one or the other, um, but I would recommend you check them out and uh, if it's something that you are looking to do, um, you can kind of see the difference between the two. So let's see here. Moving on from social media management, um, I wanted to talk about a few places that you can make surveys. Um, if you are running a company, you probably have to survey customers or people often. Um, the one that I really enjoy using the most is a, is a service called Typeform. 
and I've actually linked to an example type form that I created for today. Uh, so we can go in here, um, type form, the thing that's nice about it is that you can type uh, and somebody doesn't necessarily need a mouse to go through it. So hello, hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying this action-packed presentation. I know I'm probably not enjoying it because I get nervous uh, when I present, but I'm gonna go ahead and start this type form. I'm gonna hit enter on my keyboard. It's asking me, what is my first name? My first name is Caitlin. Nice to meet you, Caitlin. Thank you for saying my name, type form. Um, what's my last name? Seagraves. And then we have a question here. Um, are you having fun today? And I'm going to go ahead and select C on here. No, this presenter talks too fast. Um, but what's nice on here is I don't actually have to use my mouse to select something. I can use my mouse to select it, but I can also just hit C on my keyboard and then enter to submit. And it will finish with the type form that we made. So pretty easy to uh, go through. Um, and then they're also fairly easy to create, um, which I like. And Alex said that her correct answer was A, she's having a lot of fun today. So thank you, Alex, I appreciate that. Um, another great service for building surveys um, quickly is a service called Google Forms. Um, if you're familiar with Google, you probably have a Gmail account. Everybody's familiar with Google, I think. Um, but as part of their, their productivity suite that you can use, uh, Google Forms is one that I also use pretty heavily. Um, so this is one that I made very quickly. Um, this is a fun survey and we're gonna take it. So how much do you love Fridays? I can select so much, you can never know how much. And then the third one that I'm probably gonna go with is today is not Friday, it's Blair's Day, Maytober 20 something. I never know what day of the week it is anymore because I never leave my home. Um, thank you, COVID-19. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, hit submit. And uh, it's been put into a spreadsheet that I can go and look at um, all of the submissions later. So pretty easy to create. Um, I didn't spend very long creating that, that uh, sample program or that sample survey, but you can actually go through and add images to the background. Um, you can change the colors and you can also do different types of questions, um, multiple choice, uh, long answer, short answer, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then the third survey service that I wanted to mention, SurveyMonkey. Um, SurveyMonkey has been around for quite a while and uh, SurveyMonkey is really great um, if you have A, the budget for it, and B, um, a, a need for like a long-term access to survey information. So um, we have a service called Your Next Great Read where you can actually go through and fill out a reading survey. Tell us a bit about what you like to read, what you don't like to read. Um, we use SurveyMonkey for that and it goes and it submits your answers. Um, we can go and download your answers and get those forms back to you. Um, and it's really a great archival tool because we can actually see um, all of the reading surveys for the last six, seven years, however long the service has been around. So it's a good tool, uh, but it does cost. So you may look into that pricing. Um, if you can get by with using one of the free tools uh, like Google Forms, go for it. If you can't, maybe SurveyMonkey or Typeform would be a good one for you to look into. Um, now moving on from surveys, uh, if anybody sends out newsletters often, um, you know, you can always just open up an email and then start typing. Uh, but if you want something a little more branded, um, services like MailChimp or Constant Contact can be really great for building uh, nice templates that you can use to send out to your customers um, or patrons. Um, MailChimp has been around for a while and they've actually kind of expanded what they do. Um, it used to be just email marketing. Now they've gone on to social media um, as well as like even like I think you can buy a domain through MailChimp anymore. Um, the one I use most often is called Constant Contact. Um, so I'm just gonna pull open um, a newsletter. If you are familiar with our digital literacy lab, you may know that we send out newsletters pretty regularly that have information about upcoming programs we have. Um, so this is a template that we use for all library newsletters. Um, so I was actually just able to copy this template from, a, from uh, our public relations office and go through and just add my own text. Um, it includes things like buttons, as well as you can like embed um, icons to social media. Um, and whenever people reply to it, it'll come to my email inbox, which is handy. Um, but it also tracks stats like um, how many people opened your newsletter, uh, how many people clicked links in your newsletter. It can kind of give you an idea of like how much interaction your newsletter is actually getting, which is pretty handy. Um, and of course, 
both of these services cost. Um, Constant Contact, um, I think, is quite a bit cheaper than MailChimp, and I really enjoyed using it for the couple of years that I've been using it. Uh, now, moving on uh, to writing skills. Um, if you're anything like me, you're a terrible proofreader. Uh, I cannot proofread to save my life. Um, and a tool that I really enjoy using is called Grammarly. Um, Grammarly is an extension you can add to your browser. Um, there are some paid tiers of Grammarly that you can use, uh, but essentially Grammarly will go through and make sure the things that you're writing um, are grammatically correct. It'll check for spelling. Um, and it'll offer um, suggestions for like making your email sound a little bit more authoritative or uh, making it sound a little nicer um, or restructuring a sentence so that it's actually grammatically correct. Um, so they've got a free version, they have a paid version, uh, but I'm a big fan of Grammarly. Now, if you're looking to improve your grammar um, without some sort of tech tool guiding your every movement, um, I would like to recommend a Linda course that you can access for free with your library card. Um, this is actually a learning path that will help you develop your writing skills. Um, it's nine, hour, nine and a half hours of content um, built out of eight different courses. And uh, when you finish it at the end, you can even get a certification to put on your LinkedIn profile. So if anybody is kind of in the job hunt or looking to beef up your resume, um, LinkedIn Learning can be a really great way to do that. Um, and it's actually free with your library card. Uh, if you go to tulsalibrary.org, you can find a link. Um, I've also embedded it here. Uh, but all you need to, well, I'm going to have to fix that link, um, to log in is your library card. So I'm just going to go to tulsalibrary.org. And of course, I am logged in right now. So let me uh, get logged out really quick. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, tulsalibrary.org, if you go to programs and services, you can make your way to online learning and lynda.com. Like I said, I'll fix that link in the presentation, but to get logged in, you type in your library card and your library card password. Um, and as you can see here in their library, they have a huge uh, list of things to choose from, um, but I really like this uh, Develop Your Writing Skills course. Um, I think it has some good content in here. Um, moving on from writing skills, we have some project management tools um, that I've used that I've liked. Um, the first one being Trello. Uh, so Trello is a service, again, they have a free version and a paid version, um, where you can create project boards. Um, now these project boards can be shared, they can just be used just for yourself, you can create teams, uh, your teams can have multiple project boards that they work on. Um, but on these project boards you have different like almost sticky notes, and then within those sticky notes are, uh, say like tasks or things that you have to do um, you can add due dates to them. You can have a section to add notes. Uh, you can add materials that you may be using or links to other uh, resources. You can have comment, you can like put comments in here. So say multiple people are working on a task. Um, you can kind of put where you left off, where you picked up. Um, a way that I've seen this used in the past um, was in a library I used to work in. Um, our graduate students, our graduate assistants had uh, tasks that they had to complete um, in a way that we tracked um, what progress people were making, say they were shelf reading, so they were going through and making sure every single book in our collection was in order. Um, we would have, uh, we had a sticky note where people could put where they picked up and where they left off, um, and we had them initial it. So you could also see who's doing shelf reading, so like who's actually doing their job, um, and then where they've left off so the next person can pick it up. So it can be used for lots of different things. Um, and again, there's free and paid versions of it available. Um, another one, Asana, is actually very similar to Trello, um, but I like the design a little bit better because it's kind of neater and cleaner to look at. Um, they, of course, have a free and a paid version that you can look at, um, but it is very similar where you can add due dates, you can add links and, and attachments, you can comment on things, um, and then you kind of have like these list of things that you're working on um, and you can label them. So like in progress, complete, um, maybe reference materials. Uh, and again, you can share it just for yourself. You can share it with the team, um, but it can be a, a good tool if you're kind of trying to manage knowledge between people. Um, and then a service that I use daily is called Slack. Um, if you have not heard of Slack, uh, it is basically a, I guess I could say a forum, um, 
so Slack is a place where it's, it's slack.com is what it's called, and you can create uh, Slack teams. Um, in those Slack teams, you can have channels. Uh, so say we had one for the library, we don't use Slack at the library, but if we did, um, in my department, we could have a channel that talks specifically about shelf reading. We could have a channel that talks about Facebook program or Facebook events, no, Facebook posts. We could have a shelf, we could have a channel for uh, pictures of puppies and you can go through and people can add comments in there, they can upload images, uh, but you can also do other things like put polls in here. Um, and it actually, the thing that I like about Slack the most is how well you can integrate other apps into it. Uh, so say you use Zoom uh, for, for meetings, you could actually create a Zoom link um, in within Slack that people could find and then get to your Zoom information. So uh, there's lots of things you can do on here. Um, it's, a, it's a fun social thing. Um, and I also really like the fact that you can customize and create your own emojis. Um, so the Slack that I use with some of my friends, somebody made a, an emoji of me in a birthday hat. Um, and anytime you know, somebody mentions a party, I can add my emoji, it's me in a birthday hat, which is kind of fun. Uh, now, moving on to some of the just for fun resources, and I'm actually going through these a lot faster than I thought that I would, so that's good. Um, there is a service called Jiffy. Um, it's a website that you can find free GIFs on. Um, I would pull the room to see who says GIFs and who says GIFs, but I really don't care all that much. Um, but if you're unfamiliar with GIFs, uh, they are just quick, uh, image shot or video shots without sound. You can embed them into emails uh, to make your emails a little more fun. You can add them to social media posts. You can put them on website. You can put them on presentations to make it a little more fun. Um, here we have LeVar Burton dancing in a library, um, a, a hobby of mine really, dancing at the library. Um, one thing I will say about Jiffy, uh, some of their content uh, can be not suitable for work. Um, so this is a a search that I did previously. I'm hoping that it has uh, okay content, but you can search shocked and see all of the shocked uh, GIFs that are available. Um, one thing that's kind of nice in here, you can also upload and create GIFs. Uh, so say you have a video that you want to use, you could actually upload your GIF or upload your video or even like link to a YouTube um, video and make your own GIF uh, that you can then go and embed in your own presentations or put wherever. Um, I have a video of my coworker, Nick, dancing in front of cows. And I have made many GIFs of him dancing in front of cows. I won't do it today because I'm starting to feel a little bad about it. Um, but Jiffy is a great resource if you're looking to uh, spice up your emails a little bit uh, or, you know, put into presentations. Um, another app that I really enjoy using is called Piscal. Uh, Piscal is a website, it's a browser-based thing where you can actually create like animated uh, sprites. Um, so here, this cute little panda, if you get in here, on the left-hand side, you can see all these different frames. Um, and as I scroll through them, you'll see how the frame changes. Basically, you create frames, and then over here on the right, you can see how those frames are kind of looping together to create a fun little sprite. Um, way this could be fun is if you're, you know, designing something for your company, you want to put people to a challenge of like using your logo to do something fun. Um, I really just like this hopping llama. So it's, it's a fun thing that I use to create um, images for video games pretty regularly, uh, but I'm sure it could be used for other things as well. Um, and I think this might be the last one on here. Um, Stop Motion Studio. Um, if anybody is looking to do some like fun videos, um, Stop Motion can be a really easy thing to create. Uh, this is actually a video that was created at the library um, by some teenagers. Um, I think they called it Love in the Stacks. Uh, the thing I appreciate most about this uh, stop motion is that they save the kissing for when they're outside of the library because we prefer not to see PDA at the library. Um, but Stop Motion Studio, it's a free app that you can download to a mobile device. And essentially you go through and take uh, pictures and then it loops those pictures together. Um, and you can do like claymation, you can, you know, use people. Um, I've made a lot of stop motion videos to advertise like events that we have coming up um, where I'll use like paper to spell things out. Um, but you can use it for a lot of stuff and it's free, a lot of fun to use, especially for all ages. I do have one more in here. Um, it is a thing called Bitmoji. So if you've noticed throughout this presentation, there's been tiny little Caitlin's doing weird things. 
Um, this is a service called Bitmoji. Um, and if you have Snapchat, um, you've probably seen Bitmoji before, but essentially it creates like a little character of yourself. Um, and if you use the extension in your browser, um, you can actually uh, see your little Bitmoji in different situations. We can search. So say I want a Bitmoji of me using a computer. Um, I can just come in here, right click copy, then go to my presentation, hit paste. And here we have a little Bitmoji of Caitlin sitting at a computer doing things, which is what my work looks like these days. So uh, it's a fun thing to use. Um, again, you can use it in email or to make your presentations dumber than they should be. Um, and who knows, I had another one on here as well. Um, Wayback Machine, I have probably talked to a few of you about the Wayback Machine before, um, if you've come to any of my other classes. But uh, Wayback Machine, is basically an archive of the internet um, where you can look to see past versions of websites. Um, so I'm going to come in here and type in tulsalibrary.org. And on here, I can see what our website has looked like uh, over the years. And it goes back to 1998. Um, so I can come in here and see what the library's website looked on December 12, 1998, at 336. I'm assuming AM, um, I can see what TulsaLibrary.org looked like. Um, our website today looks much better, I think, than the one from 98. Uh, this is not a bad website for 1998. Uh, but some ways you might use Wayback Machine if uh, you want to do like a Throwback Thursday and look at like what your business's website looked like through, throughout, the, throughout time. Uh, this can be a fun way to kind of go back and capture history um, of the internet. Um, I do have a couple of resources that I wanted to share if you're looking to learn more about social media or technology for marketing. Um, I talked a little bit about Linda earlier, um, but they have courses on all sorts of stuff. Um, I just did a quick search for um, marketing and looked at different learning paths that they have, and it looks like they have 16 different learning paths just for marketing. Um, if you look at some of these, they have like little... Uh, numbers. So this is a 12 hour path. This is a 27 hour path. Um, if you don't want to devote quite this much time to becoming a social media advertising specialist, you can also look for courses um, to find shorter uh, things that you can work through. Um, but if you are looking to kind of beef up your skills, this is a really great way to do it. Um, and again, it is free with your library card. Um, a couple, and again, I will fix that link later. Um, a couple of resources that I use pretty heavily PC Mag um, has some really great articles on technology tools that come out um, and will even go through and compare different services. So if you decide you want to use a um, project management tool like Asana or Trello, you can come in here and they have pretty good articles comparing different services, um, looking at the cost and the functionality. Um, and this is how I stay on top of new technology as it comes out. Um, another service that I use uh, is called Free Tech for Teachers. Um, it's a blog that's updated uh, several times a week where they, uh, Richard Byrne, um, will update with new technology. Um, all of it, all of the technology he talks about is usually free, um, and then he actually will go into like ways that you can practically use it. Um, I recommend this, this service to teachers pretty often, uh, but I have found most of the things they talk about on this blog can be applied to other, you know, other industries as well. So, you know, beyond for teachers, if you're looking for new tech tools, this is a, a great website to look into. Um, again, I, I got most of these services that I talked to talked about today um, from an article in Computers and Libraries. Um, you can access this if you go to the library's website. You can search for Computers and Libraries and find this article. Um, but I, you know, it was kind of an older article. I updated a lot of things from it, but they had several good tools that I didn't have time to get to today. Um, we are doing weekly workshops for, as part of this Tech Talk series um, every Friday at noon. Uh, next week, we're going to have a graduate student who's studying data science come in and do some exploratory data analysis with a data set. Um, so it should be pretty fun. The week after that, um, I have a privacy engineer who's going to be talking about cryptocurrency. So if you are looking to learn a little bit more about what Bitcoin is, um, or Dogecoin, which is kind of a fun thing that I learned about in the last time he gave this talk. Um, that'll be a good introductory class. 
Um, but you can find uh, the, the calendar of events at tulsalibrary.org slash events um, and get registered through that calendar. Um, I'm going to open up some time here at the end for questions. Uh, that, chunk, that chat function is available if you guys have any questions. Um, I'm going to be around for a bit longer if we don't have any questions. Um, so if you don't want to ask the whole group, that's okay too. Uh, but I just wanted to say thank you all so much for coming today. Hopefully you got introduced to something new. Um, if only uh, all of the fun bitmojis that I can pick from. Um, again, all of these slides are available here at tinyurl.com slash DLL hyphen marketing. Um, and I will go through and fix that Linda, um, that Linda link that uh, was broken. Um, and Alex said, I'm so excited to play with some of these. So thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, but I hope you all have a great day. And again, I'll be around for a few minutes for questions if you have any. <laughs>